Well, above ground electric facilities are the ones that you typically see when you drive down the street on the poles. They're above ground, they're visible. Underground facilities you can't see, obviously. They're, they're buried underneath the ground, typically two to three feet underground, and all the electric facilities are under there, and you may occasionally see an electric box or a transformer sitting on the ground, but all the wires are primarily underground. Above ground installations are always a lot easier because you can see where you're uh, working, it's, it's visible. Underground you have to do a lot of trenching, you have to worry about rock, you have to work around other utilities that may be underneath the ground, you have to replace sidewalks. Uh, above ground uh, you have to put a pole in the ground and then everything is strung and we use a bucket truck and we're able to put those facilities in. So it's a lot easier and a lot less expensive to put in above ground facilities. Underground facilities are much, much more expensive to put in. Typically, if you're dealing with a brand new development in an open space, uh, the underground facilities will cost three to four times more to put in than, uh, than above ground facilities. If you're dealing with converting in an area that is already built up, like in downtown Fayetteville, uh, it can cost about 10 times more than replacing uh, overhead facilities with an in-kind overhead facility. That's why we do a pretty exhaustive cost-benefit analysis anytime we take a look at converting an area from above ground to underground. We take a look at the age of the infrastructure that's there. Is it due for replacement? We take a look at the neighborhood itself. We take a look at the soil that it's in. And most importantly, we take a look at the number of outages that, that we've had in that area. Does this area have a susceptibility for outages? Does it have a lot of birds, for example, squirrels, which will cause outages. That helps us cost justify putting those facilities under the ground. For example, we just did a recent underground conversion where we took above ground facilities and put them underground. That job cost over $2 million. But when we took a look at the outages in that area, when we took a look at the age of the facilities in that area, we were able to cost justify that because of the advantages. Population is one of the factors which we take a look at. Actually, it's customer density. Because uh, if you're in a very rural area, there's not that many homes, typically putting above ground facilities is a lot more cost effective. If you're dealing with a highly dense area like a new housing development or apartment complex, because of the number of customers there, you get economies of scale by putting facilities underground. That's why PwC, if there's a brand new housing development in the city of Fayetteville, we require that those facilities be placed underground. Uh, we don't have a plan to convert 100% of the city of Fayetteville to underground facilities. That would cost an, a, an extreme amount of money. But what we are doing is anytime we do have to go into an area and replace those facilities, we do that cost-benefit analysis so we make sure that we're using our ratepayers' dollars the most effective way. Underground is much, much more reliable. Uh, believe it or not, when you're dealing with above-ground facilities, things like trees, snakes, squirrels, birds can cause outages. Uh, underground, you obviously don't, don't have to deal with that. Uh, typically with underground, the things that cause outages are people digging and not knowing that there are underground facilities there. That's why PwC is part of the North Carolina 811 system, which requires customers to call up anytime they're digging in an area, even if it's just putting in a tree in their yard, to call up and have all underground utilities located. That way they know where the underground utilities are located, not only for their own public safety, but just in case there's an accident and it can cause an outage. Even though uh, outages are much, much less frequent, uh, they can take longer to repair because when, when you're looking above ground, you can see a tree limb that is laying across power lines and you can locate it and you can repair it very easily. Underground, if there's a fault, unless it's someone who's digging, you have to go search that fault out. And it just takes a little bit of a, a additional testing and a little bit of additional time. We do have very specific training for our people who work on underground facilities because it is a lot different than working overhead. Uh, we do have to do additional testing. We have switches which we can isolate lines and make sure that the power is off. Safety is our number one concern, so we make sure that before anybody works on any facility, whether it be above ground or underground, that that facility is safe for them to work on. But training is extremely important. The biggest advantage of underground facilities uh, for PwC and customers is the lower amount of outages. Uh, customers will not be inconvenienced by having their lights go out. Uh, the, the one disadvantage is, is the cost. But again, I think we have uh, over the years and, and dealing with best practices and refining our economic model have been able to do a pretty extensive and robust cost-benefit analysis that we make sure that we're doing the right thing.
I, I guess in closing, what I would say is that I think our customers uh, should realize that, that PwC is always taking a look uh, at the cost-benefit analysis and how we spend their dollars. And we're taking a look at the overall picture and trying to make sure that we have low rates, but we also have reliable service. And we're making sure that we keep that balance between the two.